a recording. We got T in transits for what day is it? Today, is August seventh, two thousand twenty-three. Guys, this is a. Um, I'm already seeing seven and thirteen um, <clears throat> starting to manifest. It's very cool. I mean, yeah, just for the start of it, like we had another person here, which we don't normally have. So already the like the army energy is is starting to accumulate. Um, but let's go ahead. We're in the second line now, right? Yeah, two going into three. Yeah, so I'll just read the rave eaching gate seven, the army, the role of the spirit in, or sorry, the role of the self in interaction, the point of convergence by design, the need for leadership to guide and order society. <clears throat> Line two, the Democrat, the ability to lead by serving the will of the majority, the application of universally accepted systems when connected through the alpha channel to gate 31 influence the potential for widespread and revolutionary effect on society. This is the capacity of the self to lead when chosen. The detriment is elitism and degeneration by Democrats of democracy. The capacity of the self once chosen to feel superior to those who chose them. Pretty much 90% of the politicians in government today. So, yeah, so the difference I hear between like detriment and what is the other one? Exaltation. Exaltation is like a leader just being chosen by the natural way rather than being voted in through democracy. Mm. Right. Yeah. Like there's, there's leaders in our society, in our communities that are actually elevated by their uh, uh, actions and their choices. And then there is the, uh, the elected officials, which, you know, we don't really know who they are as much of a democracy as this is. And as much as we are able to like vote, you know, it's just like Instagram or, you know, it's a deep fake in a lot of ways. A lot of these politicians are not necessarily here with their highest intentions in mind. And anyway, not to make this too political, just saying that nice, there is there is that um, flaw within democracy or within any community when it gets too big um, that the representatives that are chosen are no longer connected to the people that chose them, or no longer invested in the people that chose them. Um, so this is also the voters or non-voters. Doesn't matter who the leaders are as long as they leave me alone to do my thing. Yeah, true, yeah. big time. And that's that's the, um, you know, um, our brother Kale says, like, you don't have to be perfect, but you do have to participate. And that's something yeah. that actually I've been considering about this channel. I'm like, should I just kick all the people that are not participating? Because, um, <laughs> you know, it's like there's people that are participating and it's awesome. And there's also these wallflowers that are just watching. And I know in um, the work that me and Luke do with, with some of the retreats that we've been on, it's, you know, to have somebody uh, choosing not to participate and just watch, um, or even in your Kung Fu studio, you say like, right, they, you allow people to watch like once or twice, but once they come um, and they're still watching, right, then you, you either ask them, hey, you want to participate, you want to get started, or, you know, like basically this this energy of of non-participation and just mm -hmm. wanting to do your own thing like there's no way for you to be here and <clears throat> not participate in some way like it's a question of how well you're participating not necessarily if you're participating if that makes sense um yeah but i'm just gonna look at the transit and see what uh <clears throat> see what time uh, we have today ananda we're talking about um we are in Gate seven right now, talking about the sun and line two. So right now we're in line two. In about six or seven hours or so, we'll Whoa, be hold on a second. We're not in line two. Oh, we're not. We're still in line one. Oh, oh. What? Oh, oh. Ooga. oh no. Glad we referred to the transits. Indeed. Okay, so we're gonna shift in <laughs> at like sometime around twelve. So Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Five so in hours. about five hours, we're going to shift into this this second line of it. Um, okay. So okay, cool. So this is kind of like a similar um, reading as yesterday, mm -hmm. um, and this is like you know something to note is like me and Luke are in Hawaii, so wherever you're at, you know it might be nighttime, so the transits might be shifting. You know, if, for instance, if you're on the other side of the planet and it's nighttime for you, and you're going to sleep after this. Um, which if you wouldn't mind everyone sharing where you're calling in from in the chat, that would be super helpful. Just so we have an idea of where everyone's calling in from. Um, yeah. But we are still in the authoritarian, which is the exaltation is the capacity of the self to guide with authority. The detriment is the capacity of the self to insist that its authority is the best. Um, 
And then we're moving into this line of the Democrat. I'm pretty sure. Mm. Or wait, hold on a second. Yeah. Is it the sixth? Oh, no, it's the seventh the... today. We are in the. Sh My bad, guys. Yeah. I'm yeah. tripping yeah. over yeah. here. Brain factor got you all. Wow. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> we got Florida, Arizona, Michigan, Cali, BC. Sweet. No, we are. You're right. Egypt. What? Yeah. Egypt and Maui specifically are on the same meridian line, which is uh, considered the heart chakra. Great, guys. Sorry for confusing everyone and myself. Uh, we are in. The second line, that's the line to the Democrat, all that stuff. And then in seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, in about four hours, we're going to shift into the third line, which is the anarchist. It's the rejection of any institutionalized offer. It's the consistent need for change, no matter what the prevailing conditions, the drive of the self to express many roles. Detriment is the nihilist, the capacity of self to deny value in any roles. Mm. Um which let's go to the I Ching in line two. Yeah. To see what, what we can pull up for. Real quick, Ananda, I'm going to have to visit you in Egypt someday because I feel a huge pull to Egypt. Me too. I uh, love, yeah. I've let's always to loved Egypt. Egypt. Do some I Ching readings in Egypt. <laughs> yeah, maybe do some I Ching in the pyramid. Yeah, meditating. What is that noise? It's like some dudes throwing coins <laughs> on the. <laughs> okay, great. All right. So, so this is line 7.2. 7.2. Nine in the second place means, in the midst of the army, good fortune, no blame. The king bestows a triple declaration. So the second line, if you look at the hexagrams like we talked about yesterday, the second line is the yang line amidst all of the yin lines. <clears throat> the leader should be in the midst of his army, in touch with it, sharing good and bad with the masses he leads. This alone makes him equal to the heavy demands made upon him. He needs also the recognition of the ruler. The declarations he receives are justified because there is no question of personal preferment here. The whole army whose center he is in, is honored. Oh, the whole army whose center he is, is honored in his person. So, yeah, it's like we talked about yesterday. Like it's real important as a leader to be amongst the army that you're creating, which you know, in this experience right now, we've got Mr. Leader right here, Marco. Hi. Amongst the people. We're all here sharing. You know, it'd be kind of whack if he was just like, all right, I'm going to make this Discord and all my moderators, you guys do it. I'm going to be in the shadows, you know? So it was really important, like when starting something, to be in it amongst it. And when I think about my leaders or my teachers, my masters, my masters are continually testing up in their material too. So, like, for instance, my my master in Albuquerque is a seventh degree black belt, and he's you know st he's still learning new material from his masters, who are ninth degree masters, elder masters, and they're still teaching new forms. Mm. There's still so much to share within the the art of Shaolin Kung Fu that I'm a part of. Mm -hmm. It's like the um, the energy of of always being a student. Like my brother once he he's a very wise dude, but also very thick uh but he says some wise stuff very uh, thick he's a thick boy yeah yeah uh, not like physically he's like bocky yeah. but he's he's, body he's, body. he's definitely uh stubborn in a lot of ways uh but he's he's he says brilliant stuff yeah and uh, he talked about like in turn he was applying it to movement and physicality which you know kung fu kind of fits in that in that realm of like always being or never never getting beyond <laughs> the uh the student phase like right like phase which is kind of like awkward and whatever then there's you know you've got something down and then there's the master stage and a lot of people want to get to the master stage and like i'll use myself an as an example before i started this discord i was starting to feel like not a student anymore like i was just like oh i'm the master of this system and i noticed that and that's one of the the driving forces that actually wanted me to um, explore the discord more or explore our community more because when you're the top dog and you're the only you're like the coolest person in the room and every room you go into you're the coolest person in the room like eventually right eventually it's like that's going to get boring or you're going to slip into the detriment of this line here which is like the capacity of the self once chosen to feel superior to those who chosen that, that's a trap 
Like, I, I don't like being the coolest person in the room. Like, my ego probably likes it, but personally, um, you know, the thing that's watching Marco, it doesn't like when Marco is the cool, always the coolest person in the room because then it's like there's no room for growth. There's no, um, I just get stagnant up at that master energy. And um, it, it's, it's important to never lose that, um, that student in here. And so, you know, every time we come online here, it's like, you know, I, I, uh, I put myself in that mindset of like, okay, what am I going to learn today as opposed to what I'm going to teach? Because y'all are going to learn through us learning, mm -hmm. right? It's not necessarily about teaching. Again, it's about, it's about the connection in the community. So yeah, every master was once a white belt. Mm -hmm. And the concept of the black belt is, you know, you're given a white belt at the beginning and it gets dirty over time through sweat, through blood, through dirt, rolling around on the ground. And that's how it becomes black eventually by all the time and effort put into it, which Kung Fu translates to time and effort. I'm so excited for you to open up your school, bro. It'll like, be. It's so dope. I know. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just like, once you, once you actually get the okay from your masters to open up the school, being able to, you know, uh, offer that to our community here as, as well, in addition to our Maui community, is going to be so fun. Um, okay, so let's go into line three. So in about five to six hours, we're going to shift into line three um, from, from this point here. So what do we got in there? Do you want to do yours first? Um, I think I already read it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Rejection of any institutionalized off order. Mm. <clears throat> so six in the third place means, perchance the army carries corpses in the wagon. Misfortune. Here we have a choice of two explanations. One points to defeat because someone other than the chosen leader interferes with the command. Mm. The other is similar in its general meaning, but the expression carries corpses in the wagon is interpreted differently. At burials and sacrifices to the dead, it was customary in China for the deceased to whom the sacrifice was made to be represented by a boy of the family who sat in the dead man's place and was honored at his representative. On the basis of this custom, the text is interpreted as meaning that a corpse boy is sitting in the wagon, or, in other words, that authority is not being exercised by the proper leaders, but has been usurped by others. Perhaps the whole difficulty clears up is if it is inferred that there has been an error in copying. The character fan, meaning all, may have been misread as shi, which means corpse. Allowing for this error, the meaning would be that if the multitude assumes leadership of the army, rides in the wagon, misfortune will ensue. Whoa. What? Okay. <laughs> so Aaron what I'm getting super from confused that, by that one. <laughs> so it, it says carries corpses in the wagon. So what it's saying here too is that corpse could have meant that there was a boy of the family who had passed in the place of the person who had passed in the wagon. So instead of being corpses in the wagon, it would be like the representative, like the representatives of those who had passed in the wagon, which I'm assuming maybe is a boy of the family, whether it is nephew yeah. or a son. Yeah, that's what they were saying. Um, whoa, which that's super heady. Regardless, I mean, so okay, so that's that's why um, you know what we have with everything here um in terms of like reading the human design and the I Ching, because human design at least the rave I Ching, is kind of like raw's you know interpretation or digestion of all of this and so within the context of what he created with the body graph or what he channeled with the body graph um you know he's able to bring through some kind of um i want to say less confusing because this might have been super clear in the original chinese um as they were saying there's probably a mistranslation in there um but in the anarchist so we, we're talking about roles and the questioning of roles and in the exaltation it's the drive of the self to express many roles and the detriment is the capacity of the self to deny values in any roles so what that what i what i could see that is in, for instance like talking about the energy being usurped it's like maybe there's a lieutenant who thinks that he should be a general and thinks that he has no value as a lieutenant and because of that, 
there are now corpses in the wagon because instead of doing the thing that he's supposed to do as the lieutenant because he's daydreaming about being the general, people die because he's not doing the thing. Okay, that, that kind of yep. makes more no, sense. No, literally, that's what I was reading over again was like, okay, where's the, the gold in this? It, it, in other words, <laughs> that authority is not being exercised by the proper leaders, but has been usurped by others. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, yeah, exactly. Somebody acting as their superior in the order of the army, you know, can cause misfortune for everybody else. So this below is, and above. Yeah, this is, so this would be, um, in terms of transits, this would be the energy to take on more responsibility than um, like working above your pay grade, mm -hmm. um, below your pay grade. Just say. Is this, the, is this the meaning of corpse? In many armies, a corpse is a battlefield formation composed of two or more divisions and especially typically commanded by a general. Oh, that's, that makes sense. That would be like the, like the English translation of uh, corpse, or not translation, but meaning of corpse in a militarized uh, concept. What you're saying is like the, you know, the army corpse or the, um, ah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. But corpse also, you know, has always meant bodies in, in older languages, which, oh, that's a Angel really interesting. shared one, too. So this says, line three, perhaps the army carts corpses pitfall. The corpses used to be filled with vitality, but now they're just dead weight. The mindset, strategy, or emotion that used to be an inspiring source of strength is now a lifeless husk. Mm. Time to lay it to rest. Carting it with you will do you real harm. Mm. So it's like, it's like we were talking about yesterday is the little deaths. If you, you know, hang on to this part of you that's dying. Oh, this is super relevant for me right now. <laughs> <laughs> if, I was in a <laughs> if I'm going to hold on to the shit that's fucking dying a part of me, then I'm just going to be pulled down with it. And eventually we'll be killed in the battlefield because I'm carrying around all these corpses instead of just being like, brother, you died. I love you. I have to leave you behind. You know, honor you, take your tag. You know, if we see in like military or like war movies, a lot of the times it's like you just grab the tag off of your buddy who passed to bring that back to the family. Because mm. it's like, I can't carry you back because then I'll just die with you. And then mm. I can't support your family. Mm. Damn, this is that's fucking, that's heavy. Brain factor. <laughs> Brain factor. What does this one say? Like what Angel's sharing right now, Angel, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 No, Angel. Angel's Angel's got the 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 library. Third individual variant: ineffective delegation produces too many and too poorly motivated persons in leadership capacities. When such persons are so assigned, expect defeat and disaster. Right. Yeah. So then that I mean that's and that's that's typical third line activity is right is to do something and. Um, you know, understanding that like, oh, this is, this is a, is a, is a martyr line day. It's like, well, you know, it's okay to make mistakes on this day. And, you know, the point of mistakes is to learn from those mistakes so that you don't make them again. And what is it? Was that like about like assigning roles, like assigning too many roles? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Taking on too much responsibility. Taking on too much responsibility. That makes sense. Yeah, and even in what my emotional wave is around, I won't go too deep, but it was like I had to say what I needed to say, and then I was like, that's all I'm going to say for now. I love you. See you later. Boom. And Reminds me like, of saying, thank you for the trauma responses we no longer need when we are safe. Yeah. Right. And there's this 18-month um, cycle in terms of, like, relevance of trauma responses. For instance, like, if you're dealing with a trauma response that is from over 18 months ago it's like that's cooked that's a corpse that you then want to bury and let go of so tonight might even be a good time or today some point today might even be a good time to have like a little ritual where you like lay parts of yourself to rest that are um, no longer relevant uh in moving forward in your life currently so um a ritual like that could look like something as simple as you know writing down the trauma response or the story about yourself that you've held on to or whatever it is that you're going to now bury and let go of and you either burn it or give it to the ocean or give it to the lake or bury it or uh 
you know, I guess burning it would be like air magic. But in terms of, of, of whatever element you feel like is most appropriate to give this to, because one thing about the planet is that we can literally give her our shit. She will turn it into fertilizer and grow our foods with it and nourish us with it. And so mm -hmm. picking an element, uh, you know, would be your uh, up to you an opportunity to use your own discernment in terms of what element is going to transmute your your death or empty your wagon so that you can create some space so that the the um the corpses that are still filled with uh, vitality can then show up to aid you because again we're still in in this army yeah uh, and to add to that also be mindful of um you know of the environment too so if you're going to bring something to the lake don't you know like put a piece of paper in the lake and, and pollute it yeah a good idea to do with that is to like fill a a container with water or a liquid Ooh. and speak the words that you are releasing into the water and pour that into the lake or into the body of water or straight into the earth mm -hmm. because the earth needs that water the earth needs that nourishment too so mm -hmm. another weird let's get really weird with it that's so good that's so good <laughs> um do that with your pee Yes. You've literally you've yes. literally like expelled you know from your out. pee and also it's like one thing not to get i'm not gonna get too crazy but i have drunk my own urine before <laughs> <laughs> and um <laughs> pee is not waste i have to say it's not waste it's um it's a got, lot of cultures view it as kind of like yeah. medicine um but just in general it's like it's of you right and so it it has uh you know your vibration already encoded in it and to do exactly what you said is to be like okay this it was a part of me and now it's outside of me and you know i'm going to now encode it and make this ritual and then yeah bloop. and another another step now one if more you are, <laughs> if you are a person with a womb who bleeds mm -hmm. you can take your blood and offer it in this way as yeah. well yeah really powerful if you can get a tree that you connect with and pour at the roots of that tree mm -hmm. and then do that as you go through your cycle yeah. throughout the year yeah yeah bada bing bada boom bada Shall bing bada boom to uh 13? Let's do it. Cool. Let's do it. Fuck. That was a good one. It's funny, sometimes, you know, again, it's like, sometimes they, they, they hit me and I'm like, what was that? But, you know, in the effort to digest it and be with it, as so much that's just like, that comes up. Mm -hmm. What does it say? It says, my teacher once told me to share into an egg, especially if there's anger involved, and throw it into the forest. Oh, I like a, that. That's, that's a good fun. one. That's, that's a good fun. one. Um, I had one too, where I was like, our teacher's like, yeah, just dig a hole and then scream into the hole. <laughs> I've done that one before. And that's, that's up my alley. That's a, sure. that's a good, yeah. You might have to so scream into a hole. And, that's a cool one. Um, but speaking things to an egg, that's interesting. Cause we, we have a lot of chickens around here. Um, I mean, Cass, you know, you know, you know, the vibes out here on Maui, chickens everywhere. Chicken so, everywhere. Um, tossing throwing the egg into the forest to like and then thinking about the egg too is like you know that in a way is uh, similar to when women bleed right the egg comes out the the externalized egg the nutrients oh. in that then will like i've i've thrown eggs before naturally and um <laughs> whenever i do it and there's chickens around the chickens just come and start eating it and it's mm -hmm. like at first i was like oh god this is kind of brutal like isn't that their babies but it's actually that what, really nourishing for it's, them. That's what I mean. It's like, isn't that what you would do if, mm -hmm. you know, if you would reconsume it to or to um, reintegrate as much of the energy that went into making the egg as you can? Is, <clears throat> it's the same thing as a woman, you know, digesting placenta. her placenta yep. after birth. Which that's yeah. what me and Emmy do. So egg sounds like a Mexican teachings. Cuenderas. Cuerendas. Uh, also use an egg to... Curanderas. Oh, okay. Right. I've never actually seen a curander. I'm like, I know that word, but I've never yeah. seen it written out. Right. Um, they use an egg to scan the body and clear energy. Ah, mm -hmm. ah, yes. I have a shaker that's an egg. Damn, we're popping off right now. Anyway, y'all are fire. We just, I love, I've been loving doing this so much, and it's like, because I'm just learning so much, you know what I mean? And it's Same. been it's been guiding my days. Like, I'll just be going through my days, and I'll remember something I said or something someone said, and then it just, it helps guide me, so. Now, gate 13, fellowship of the man. This is the earth. So, um, and Prana, while you're here, let me, let me know if you've got anything on this because um, I've, I've conceptualized this idea that the sun is like 
you know, the rain or the energy coming from above. And then the earth energy would be like the cup that we're able to catch the sun's energy with in order to balance it out. Um, and so like, for instance, seven, the energy that we were just, we just spent, you know, half an hour talking about um, would be, right, solar energy, seven in the sun. And then this gate 13 would then be the cup that kind of we're able to capture that energy in. And so again, I just had that idea. I'm curious if you had any um, experience with that being mentioned or talked about in terms of the transits, because as I have been working with the transits for quite a while now, there's still so much to be um, learned in terms of like how they work and how best to work with them. And um, yeah. So, okay, gate 13, the fellowship of the man, the listener, universal ideas and values in an ordered framework which represents or which inspires humanistic cooperation. Line two, bigotry. The risk always present that fellowship can only exist for a particular type, whether racial, religious, national, or intellectual. Exaltation is the tolerance as the least offensive manifestation of bigotry, a role of openness through tolerance. The detriment is the obsessive belief that the highest ideals cannot be embraced by the lower forms, an extremely difficult position where even the highest ideals provide rationalization for hatred, a role of openness so narrow that there is practically no one worth listening to. Hmm. Okay, let's go to the, the tip teaching. teaching. Yeah, right up. <clears throat> like two, yeah. Uh huh. All right, six in the second place means fellowship with men in the clan. Humiliation. There is danger here of formation of a separate faction on the basis of personal and egotistic interests. Uh -huh. Such factions, which are exclusive and instead of welcoming all men, must condemn one group in order to unite the others, originate from low motives, and therefore lead in the course of time to humiliation. <clears throat> so, this is talking about the second line in 13 that Marco's pointing at, which, which is, is the, this is the line. weak line. It's the weak right line. Here. And the, the weak line in the fellowship would be the one who's like, oh, shit, man, like, we should start this side group because I don't really know if, like, I agree with what's going on in the fellowship. And somebody else is kind of like, oh, you know, you kind of have a point here. Like, let's get over here. Okay, let's meet up. Let's talk about it. But that creates a rift in the fellowship because it's based on personal and egotistic interests rather than the fellowship. So or instead of bringing what that person maybe had like uh, a problem with back to the fellowship or the group that they're originating with, being like, hey, speaking up, like, I don't really agree with what's going on right now. But rather than going to one or two people and being like, this is going on. I don't like it. Let's start something else. Oh. I'm learning about Colts right now. The detriment sounds like some of these tactics. Well, yeah, totally. Like, I'm, I mean, I'm thinking about, for instance, in the, within the context of uh like condemning one group of people in order to elevate another group of people like we see this a lot in society with like um you know uh for instance I'm trying to think of something that's not too politically charged <laughs> but they're all, they're all politically charged uh, but for instance for like a black neighborhood to come together they have to condemn the white neighborhood or vice versa for the white neighborhood to come together they have to condemn the black neighborhood that's not that's not really how life functions. And so this is the exalted form of what Marco was talking about in TikTok about safe spaces and no judgment. Oh yes, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, I put that TikTok out yesterday and we talked about it yesterday in, in here about, you know, safe spaces. When, when you say no judgment as a, a way to make a safe space, you know, it's lying as opposed to saying, hey, we're different and you guys are unique and y'all don't really fit in here, but we're going to be respectful. We're going to be kind. That's what the exaltation of bigotry is tolerance. And so it's like, hey, look, we're different. And, you know, I have these judgments about you, but I'm going to be open about it and um, express those judgments. And then that creates tolerance from bigotry. That's fucking awesome. Mm, yeah, that's so that's super helpful. Yeah. I was really nervous about that video. I was like, damn, people are gonna fucking are gonna come after me for it. They're gonna try and burn me at the stake. You know, it's funny, some girl asked me, she's like, How do you create so much content with an open throat? And I'm like, honestly, it's it's one of the hardest practices because for the longest time, and I've I've shared about this before in here, I've always wanted to to show up as the teacher because 
you know, I like woke up when I was like 19 or 20 years old and got into Reiki. And so I've always thought like, oh, I'm supposed to share this and teach this. Um, and ultimately in, in um, part of the journey of the sixth line, right, is they have a martyr phase, first 30 years of their life in terms of making mistakes. But unlike the third line, the mistakes that they make, they're not really able to let go of them. Whereas me as a, as a, as a pure third line, I'm able to make mistakes, learn, and then move on. The sixth line in a way is going to carry all their mistakes up onto the roof with them and they're going to look at them so that way they can come back down from the roof or from the mountain, re-engage in society and be like, look at all the mistakes I made. These, mm -hmm. this, is, this is the way forward. Whereas me, I'm just like, I'll break something, I'll clean it up. But then it's like, I'm not necessarily going to um, hold that in, in myself, um, whereas a sixth line would. But um, I forget where I was going <laughs> oh, with that. Oh, yeah. Dot, 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 dot. Kylie says, oh, yeah, <laughs> six, two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that was a, um, oh, but anyway, the, the, in terms of what I was talking about, I remember, in terms of how do I make so much content? Well, I'm not identifying with the content that I'm creating and I'm, I'm allowing myself to make mistakes and that's allowed me to use my open throat in a way where it's like, look, I'm not doing this for attention. I'm doing this because the energy is here. And instead of being like, what does this say about me? You know, what does this mean that I'm manifesting? It's more along the lines of like, oh, this is moving through me. It might have value for you. It might not have value for you, but I'm not going to um, uh, keep it secret because there might be some people out here that are going to give me like the wrong kind of attention, which I get the wrong kind of attention um, all the time. I realize it's not the wrong kind of attention. It's just attention. And I flavor it as wrong because the, my mind wants to be right. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move. So again, that was the second line. And we're going to move into. So, you know, for the last couple hours here of this, of this line, it might be a good opportunity to take inventory of some of the judgments you've had about people. Bigotry has a strong individual flavor. I can't be open to being influenced by just anyone. Right. Mm -hmm. But I. I can, bigotry would be like, you know, I can't be in this room because I'm not allowing myself to be influenced that person. Tolerance would be like, look, I can be in here without accepting or rejecting or feeling the pressure to accept or reject what you're saying. I can just be here and hear what you're saying. I can be tolerant of what you're saying. And then at that point, once you've heard everything they said, then you can use your discernment and judgment and be like, oh, I'm in the wrong room. Be like, oh, you're in the wrong room. This is a safe space, right? There's, there's, we're, not, we're supposed to include everybody, but that's the thing about inclusion is sometimes people go so far to include everybody that they end up excluding the people that they actually want to help or that they actually have the capacity to help. Yep. And that's happened hmm. a lot. That's been a th mm -hmm. big, big time. <clears throat> you just read line three, huh? No, no, let's, let's read line three, though. So line three is pessimism. It's the belief that what is best can never be achieved. A lack of trust that can only be transformed through concrete evidence. Openness that is conditioned by suspicion and seeks evidence. Detriment is pessimism exalted to an art form, whereas art, it may have the opposite effect, satire, where the rightness of suspicion can inspire satire. Oh man, I love satire though. It's a detriment. No, detriments aren't bad. It's just you know what I mean. It's just that's, that's just one of the expect. That's yeah. one of the expressions of it. So, um, what do you got on? Uh, just looking up a, a definition, quick. Okay, okay. Um, so the belief is best oh, okay. can never be achieved. So line three again. Here's that um, fuck around and find out energy. <laughs> um, pessimism is an openness yeah. that is conditioned by a suspicion and seeks evidence. So it's a pessimism open, if essentially that um, seeks out evidence, seeks out proof, which is very like, what is it, 62, 46? No, not 46. 47? No, not 47. 17 energy. Mind, throat, channel. That's what I'm thinking of. Um, anyway. Yeah. Let us let us read line three. Nine in the third place means he hides weapons in the thicket. Which, if you don't know what thicket is, it's a group of a large group of bushes or trees. I had to look it up. <laughs> oh, I can't <laughs> <laughs> hey, The bushes over there. Research. I do my own research. Okay. He hides weep weapons in the thicket. He climbs the high hill in front of it. 
for three years, he does not rise up. Here, fellowship has changed about to mistrust. Each man distrusts the other, plans a secret ambush, and seeks to spy on his fellow from afar. We are dealing with an obstinate opponent whom we cannot come at by this method. Obstacles standing in the way of fellowship with others are shown here. One has mental reservations for one's own part and seeks to take his opponent by surprise. This very fact makes one mistrustful, suspecting the same wiles in his opponent and trying to ferret them out. The result is that one departs further and further from true fellowship. The longer this goes on, the more alienated one becomes. Mm. So this feels like a continuation from the second line. It's like the more someone is hermiting from the, uh, from the fellowship, and, you know, not bringing their ideas to the group, like, hey, I think this is happening. Like, if I hadn't spoken up. And like said, hiding hiding the truth in their heart. Yeah, kind yeah. Of, yeah. Or hiding the sword in the bushes uh-huh. and hiding up on the tree and just, like, watching and being like, I'm going to plan my attack at some point because I don't really trust anybody over there. But really, I don't trust myself to speak up and say something about it. Because out of the fear of being judged. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Or out of the fear of being... Out of the fear of realizing I'm on the wrong side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because you're already on the outside of the judgment. So the fear is actually the truth because you are already on the wrong side for being mistrusting and stepping out of the fellowship mm-hmm. rather than stepping in further. Right. Which is a natural, which is a natural form. And ultimately what we're doing here in human design is like, you know, stepping more towards that truth, which has been, um, you know, not so easy. The truth of, hey, actually, I don't really fit in with this group, so I'm going to leave. As opposed to saying, I don't fit in with the group, so I'm going to change the group. Um, <laughs> you know? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> the belief that what is best can never be achieved. Did so you say angels? Prana said siloing. Did you mean to say soloing or siloing? So, so what are these lines corresponding to? So, Kylie, the lines are corresponding to the... Um, the lines of the hexagram that we're in. So we're, we're talking about the earth transit. So 2013 is the earth transit. And specifically we move, we're going to move through. So like yesterday was this. Um, and then halfway through yesterday, we went into the second line, which was the whole like bigotry conversation and that energy. And then we're going to move into this third line today, like or later today in about five to six hours which is, you know, again, the conversation that we're having right now. So information silo. Ah, I still don't get it. My brain's a little slow. Should I get more of that, that brain juice? Thing? <laughs> <laughs> One drop of full is all you need. Oh, God. Brain overload. We've been going I'm not hot. supposed to use my brain. I'm a reflector. <laughs> Moon, tell me what's going on. Moon. Uh, so Angel shared this. This is cool. It's, it's kind of like the in-between of this and the I Ching. So it's hiding away arms in the thickets, climbing your high mound for three years, not starting anything. In an atmosphere of suspicion and fear, the best you can do is to stow your resentment and your agenda well out of sight and take the higher ground. Mm. With a strategic overview, it becomes clear that you cannot achieve anything here by winning a fight, but only by creating harmony. Since no one can be forced to share your agenda, disengage from inner and outer struggle struggles and reconnect with your original intention. Damn, I love that. Because it's it's hiding the weapons in the bushes, which is the hiding the judgments or the attacks that you want to take on somebody. Oh. And then taking the high ground and just observing and mm. being like, let me just watch and see what happens. And take, it seems like it's saying, take three years a lawfully long time, a long time to just like <laughs> all right <laughs> this is a lawfully but long also time. it's like you know as a reflector there's i realize like there's you know there's there's nothing i can really do to change an environment if or change a group if they're not open to it and so oftentimes like for me what i've learned about the lunar cycle is realizing that like i'm not necessarily making decisions i'm out here watching the decisions that other people are making and then once those decisions have been made I'm still watching to see what happens from those decisions. And then once I see the result of those decisions, then I'm able to ask myself, do I belong here? Do I not belong here? Mm. And so it's, it's a, it's a patience. 
And it makes sense that it's the openness that's conditioned by suspicion and seeks out evidence. It's like if you're suspicious that you don't belong somewhere, well, before you immediately go away or before you inflate and start attacking what it is um, that you, I like the, the um, stowing the weapons in the thicket mm -hmm. to just be like, hey, reserve yourself a little bit because ultimately the detriment would be, um, you know, then you be, then you become the guy that's like talking shit on the sidelines and undermining, you know, what could be your people. Cause sometimes it's, it's like, you know, again, for me, it's like, I realized like, Oh, you know, I've been talking shit about something when in actuality, you know, it hadn't necessarily fully matured yet. And now that it's fully matured, mm. I actually do like the thing that it's become. And so uh, that's good lessons for me. Yeah. I like that. I am that heretic. I'll just start talking shit immediately. I'll see something <laughs> and be like, yeah, that person shouldn't be singing. You know, <laughs> or that person shouldn't be leading. Um, but I'm getting better at that. I'm maturing, you know. Anyway. Um, you want to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, roll, roll, some, let's and roll some coins. Pass the marker. I'll draw the lines. All right. Sounds good. Here's the marker. So now we're going to do the I Ching. Thanks for sharing that, Angel. That the um whatever book you got there we're gonna have to get um, uh yeah i'm ordering it like today <laughs> yeah i know it's that's a good one it, it is like an in-between of the um the I Ching and of the that I Ching because that that one kind of feels like a legit like an actual translation of the chinese I Ching, yeah it's like have you read the forward and, and all that stuff is yeah it, it's like a legit it's like it's just a, like yeah, word for word forward, okay, yeah that makes sense uh -huh. all right so now we're gonna do um we're going to draw our own hexagram. So what we just went through, for those of you that are kind of new to transits and whatnot, is this is the transiting energy. And we're in the second line, moving into the third line, meaning that we're, we're a little less than halfway through this transit. You can say, you can think it's like it's Monday in the work week. And each week there's a project kind of that like comes through. However, it's um, a, a transitory energy in the sense that it's not something that is going to change your body graph permanently. It will have a dynamic on you think of like clothes that you wear because of certain weather so for instance it's really rainy right now but it's not going to be rainy forever and so currently i would go out with an umbrella or a rain jacket but i wouldn't necessarily glue the rain jacket to myself thinking that oh it's always going to be rainy because again this is transitory energy and so with the transitory energy there are certain energies that are available and that are going to be experienced by the collective and you can either be sucked into that homogenization that sameness that's making everybody gray or you can use it to further differentiate yourself in the sense that we are able to uh then rely on our strategy and authority regardless of the weather and that we're able to be ourselves regardless of whether we're we are and specifically this one um in terms of being able to uh, you know, know when the appropriate time to deliver your uh, your judgments about something is kind of where where we were we were kind of teasing yeah. things out. I need to. Can your cable reach the laptop? Yeah, I know. That's, that's exactly. What oh, I was okay. Do. Cool. Oh, right. Charge. Love when my mental thoughts just kind of go right. <laughs> I felt you thinking you're like the battery is low. Do you see that, Marco? I'm like, yeah, I'm not blind. <laughs> I'm a little stupid, but I'm not, I'm not blind. <laughs> All right. Let's, so now we're going to do, we're going to pull an I Ching just for us. So that was like the sun and the, and the earth's energy influencing yeah. us. Now this is going to be um, the I Ching just for our community. So anyone listening and anyone um, listening to the recording later, um, this is just kind of some guidance for, um, for us individually. Yep. And take it if you want it. Okay. So we got... Yin. Yin. So Luke is drawing out the hexagrams. We rolled a yin line. Broken line. A broken line. And this one is all yin. All yin? So greater yin. Yep. Cool. So that's a yin with a dot next to it. And that's going to indicate either a divination or if we get another like that, then it's going to indicate a changing hexagram. Okay, those went everywhere. And we got um, one head. Young. That's young. One head again, so young. So right now we have mountain on the bottom. Then we have greater yang, three heads. So that's going to indicate another changing line. Chuck it, chuck it, chuck it. We got two heads, one tails, yin. Yin. Eight. 
So even numbers are yin. And then That's one it. more. That's it. Great. So we have we have lake over mountain. Yeah, lake over mountain. Oh, that's cool. They're the opposite of each other. Hmm. Huh. So now we're looking up what hexagram this is. This is thirty-one. The gate of influence. Thirty-one. Oh, we were just in thirty-one. Oh, two weeks. A week ago. Two weeks ago. Thirty-one. That's influence. Draw out the next one. Yeah. You Go ahead and read that. Influence, leading, the law of friction, whether active or passive, the engenders transference and thus influence. And so 31 actually is the um, the pairing gate to seven, which is the current sun transit, which is really interesting. Um, check right now in your body graph, see if you have 31 active. Um, another thing about 31 is if you do have 31 active, the seven is going to activate as the harmonic channel. So that means, for instance, 31 would be the ability to um, lead or have influence or like I, I kind of view them as people. And it's like 31 would be the general. The transit that we're in is the army itself or the organization of the army. And so, for instance, you might feel because of the transits with 31 that finally there's an army that's going to carry out your orders. However, because seven is in transit, the army is not necessarily always going to be around. And so it's wise to use what army energy is available but it would be unwise to build a, a, a business or enter into a relationship solely because that transit energy is active, because that transit energy is going to go away in, you know, three to four days. So it's important to know that. But let's do the, um, the I Ching for 31, because that's kind of how this stuff works. And we're going to read the judgment. Well, actually, let's read the image first of 31. So the image is a lake on the mountain, the image of influence. Thus, the superior man encourages people to approach him by his readiness to receive them. And the judgment is influence, success, perseverance furthers. To take a maiden to wife brings good fortune. Wooing. Influence or wooing, which is actually, that's a cool, because I actually have never, never seen that before. The wooing, wooing energy yeah. of to like... Um, you know, to woo someone, to, to court woo someone, to court someone. Like, hey, I have some tea. Would you like some tea? Would you like some tea? Would you I would like, like some tea. I would tea. love some tea. Ow, hot. Hot. <laughs> That's actually perfect. Mm. Um, so, yeah, influence, success, perseverance furthers. To take a maiden to wife brings good fortune. Have some babies, everyone. Just kidding. <laughs> um, and then to 32? Yeah. Well, that's easy. <laughs> we shall find that. So when, when you have dots like this, maybe you can, here, I'll trade you. When you have dots like this in your hexagram that you roll, if you have more than one, then what you do is you change these lines. So this is a yin line, and then up here, it's going to be a yang line. And then this is a yang line, and then up here, it's going to be the yin line. So that's going to give you a second hexagram to kind of help you contextualize um, your divination or your oracle. So, 32. Okay. <clears throat> 32 is Hing, duration. It is the gentle wind below the arousing thunder. I'm going to read the image. So, thunder and wind, the image of duration. Thus, the superior man stands firm and does not change his direction. Thunder rolls and the wind blows. Both are examples of extreme mobility and so are seemingly the very opposite of duration. But the laws governing their appearance and substance subsidence their coming and going endure in the same way the independence of the superior man is not based on rigidity and immobility immobility of character he always keeps abreast of the time and changes with it what endures is the unswerving direct directive in the inner law of his being which determines all his actions so the inner law of its being hmm Let's look at the judgment real quick, too. Yeah. So, duration, success, no blame. Perseverance furthers. It furthers one to have somewhere to go. Duration is a state whose movement is not worn down by hindrances. It is not a state of rest, for mere standstill is regression. Duration is rather the self-contained and therefore self-renewing movement of an organized, firmly integrated whole, 
taking place in accordance with immutable laws and beginning anew at every ending. So that's the cycle again of a new life after small death. Hmm. The end is reached by an inward movement, by inhalation, systole, contraction, and the mo- this movement turns into a new beginning in which the movement is directed outward. Exhalation, distole, expansion. Heavenly bodies exemplify duration. They move in their fixed orbits, and because of this, their light-giving power endures. The seasons of the year followed a fixed law of change and transformation, hence can produce effects that endure. Mm. So what that sounds like to me is like using, you know, following the transits, doing what we're doing here and allowing those to kind of be an influence on how we're guiding ourselves through the days, through the weeks. Um, It's kind of like moving like a heavenly body and being able to follow the seasons, the changes. Right. So even produce even, effects that endure, even following your strategy and authority through human design as well. Right. Because the things, the things are going to change around you. The only thing which endures is change. Uh-huh. Um, and your, your ability to use your strategy and authority is going to change or your loyalty to it or your, your, under, your, your embodiment of it. Yeah. The more you use it, it endures and the better it gets. So likewise, the dedicated man embodies an enduring meeting in his way of life, and thereby the world is formed. In that which gives things their duration, we can come to understand the nature of all beings in heaven and on earth. Mm. Nature, nature endures. Everything made by man eventually kind of like topples and falls apart. Mm-hmm. Makes me think about that. I'm like, man, that would suck if tomorrow a solar wave hit us and all of our Discord homies are gone. How would we like back this up in some kind of way so we can all find each other again? I would miss you guys. I'll so figure much. it out. I know I'd be, I'd be <laughs> fucked. I'd be missing you guys so much. Uh, um, Angel says this is about clearing <clears throat> ancestral trauma as well, veneration of ancestors and of life. This also makes me think of Legend of Korra, where the in the what is it, the capital city? Yeah. Um, when Korra opens up the spirit world again, the vines come in and just decimate and oh, take over and they the start city, taking over the city which is the clearing of ancestral trauma she's like okay they closed this gate at some point i'm going to open it up and allow all this to happen but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be a a good thing or an easy thing to experience it, it can be actually very hard you know that's why it's duration it's not like oh this is so great no you have to endure something to repeat it over and over again in order to learn the real lessons from it. Like horse dance. Like horse dance. <laughs> Angel says Gene Keys is one of says ones with this hexagram holds the future of the planet in their hands. Hmm. That's rather interesting. I do not have this gate. Let's see. If, 32. Let's see if Luke has this gate. I got you. Um, you do not have that gate either. I know horse stance. Yeah. <laughs> so, more horse stance. More horse stance. Always more horse stance. Eventually, guys, we're going to have like stances and forms for everything within the human design body graph. So if you have this gate, you know, maybe it's like horse stance into something else, which we're still developing that. And so I just kind of spilled the beans wind, on some things, wind, but yeah, it's not necessarily really through. secret. But um, y'all will got, be the first to... Yeah. to um, to see this before it ever hits TikTok or, or any of the other media outlets. This is like as close as you can get to um, the experimenting that I'm doing and that Luke is doing. Um, so with that being said, that's a pretty good, good, that's a successful, how you say, like reading in terms of the I Ching. So uh, influence and duration, keep those things in mind today. Um, as our like oracle for this reading here and then you know as always um, participate please um, and one thing I do want to say is we have <laughs> so I think I mentioned it yesterday uh, and if you guys look I made a forum and it's in the uh, it's in the lifestyle category at the very bottom it says movies and characters as gates which I'll probably change that name because that name sucks um, but so what we're gonna do is we're basically going to compile a list of uh, nominate, we're going to nominate um, characters from movies as embodiments of the transits. And so um, if you click on 13, that's fellowship. 
Jon what Snow. we have is um, we got some Frodo nominations. We got some Gandalf nominations. We've got Jon Snow. That's a good one. Yeah, and then um, for the Army, we have Uncle Iroh, uh, Leonidas, Xena. What else do we have? Spartacus. Oh, uh, Brave. Is that Braveheart? Braveheart. Braveheart. What's his name? McGilly? Maguli. I can't remember. It's been a very long time since I've seen it. Anyway. Definitely know who my vote's going towards. Yeah, what? Uncle Iroh? <laughs> I mean, look. Oh, you <laughs> your guy. Um, and so the, the idea is that we're going to nominate them through, uh, we're going to nominate them through gifts. So, and we're going to do them through the transit. So I'll, I'll create the forms on the first line of the new transits. Um, and then on the six line day, when we do our tea and transits, we'll go in here and we'll, um, we'll, we'll basically vote on who we want to assign. And then I'll change the original post to have that GIF or that image. So that way we'll have a list eventually. And then someone can make an infographic out of it of, um, you know, which movie characters, um, we've voted on to be the best, uh, representation of those gates. And so adding a new thing to this transit here to, you know, evolve and just keep things fresh. And naturally, it's just how it goes um, with things here. So uh, go check that out right now and um, cast your vote. If there's a character that we haven't already voted or if you really like a character, um, maybe throw a GIF of, of them up there. I definitely would recommend throwing a GIF or th at least throwing a picture because the visual representation of it, one thing that at first I was like, wow, this is not going to be helpful or um, this is just going to be a total like fun thing that we do and not necessarily um, here I'm gonna I'm gonna post it in here um, not necessarily like super helpful for uh, for our, for our education but I didn't realize like it's actually very helpful because it's it's forcing you to recognize the gates as archetypes qualities and traits within movies that you've already experienced and so for instance like gate seven for me the first character that came up with gate seven would be leonidas because he gathered his 300 troops and marched them out right and um with with that you know it's starting to make me think like oh who are some other people that embody that seven that i that i love or that i i, I associate with leonidas who else has those qualities of it because again human beings are um naturally an amalgamation of, of a bunch of different gates, right? We all have multiple gates active, multiple channels, some people. Um, and the ability to recognize them without needing to look at a chart is ultimately the kind of energy that I want to cultivate here. So that way, you know, it's not just a bunch of bookworms, like we'll have the books and we'll be wormy with it, but we'll also have the eyes to see and the ears to listen and the nose to smell, um, which eventually like the greater uh, intention of this community is to empower you guys to live your human design and then start providing you with opportunities to practice your human design. Um, so that means like calling out not selves in each other, you know, um, uh, inviting people out of the not selves through strategy and authority, but ultimately like the grand, uh, the granddaddy intention is that you will then feel equipped to create your own communities wherever you are at. Right. So, whatever community you're in right now, you know, again, realizing, okay, you know, this is on point. This is, I vibe with this. People treat me and they um, recognize my uniqueness and I feel acknowledged and satisfied and successful and peaceful, et cetera here, or I don't. And, you know, I'm going to now create my own community because that's, that's typically what happens. We're born into the families that we're born into, right? And we chose them for a reason that may be beyond us. But ultimately, everything that you did, all the trauma that you endured, all the bullshit, every, your whole life, now you're unplugged from the matrix. Now you're realizing like, oh, there's a way of being. There's a deconditioning process. But then ultimately, there's a refinding of home. There's a finding of your tribe that comes to you by way of practicing, living your authentic circuitry and living you know, your, your human design. So... With that being said, I'm really excited about this. Um, movies and characters as gates because this is one of these mutations that it doesn't feel like studying, um, but you're, you're still applying the knowledge and the, um, the, uh, the uh, 
material that you have been studying it's just in a different way that doesn't feel like studying it's like in learning through inception mm. as opposed to learning through um, the actual studying of it anything thanks everybody i yep. think all of you have been here since we started and yeah you guys are awesome yeah I'll, appreciate you yeah uh, another thing i want to do is um invite you guys to bring your friends on board you know I'm, there's there's a way to um to invite people, uh, you just go to the top of the server, click the guy, and it'll say invite people. Yeah, click and you on can, where it says evolve human design. Yep, click on the server, the main server head, and you can invite people. So, you know, invitation to invite your friends who, you know, you want to journey with you. It doesn't matter if they're, you know, in your local area or elsewhere, but again, everyone is welcome here. Uh, this is a, a real judgment zone, not a judgment free zone in the sense that like I encourage people to, um, you know, appropriately share their judgments um, in a way. Um, but this place is not safe because it's judgment free. It's like, for instance, one of the analogies I use is like a bird is not safe standing on a branch because of the strength of the branch. The branch could break and the bird would be safe because the guy has wings. You know, so just reminding you guys that you have wings and that you're not safe here because this is strong. You're safe here because you have the ability to float yourself and you're already complete and whole within of yourself. So with that, we're going to go sign out and probably do a bunch more stuff in the Discord <laughs> or something. Maybe we'll go train. Beach and train. Beach and train, maybe. That works too. All right. Guys, bye.